the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. Faithful Ballot Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, The Boathouse Mystery. The Green Hornet strikes again. Yes, sir. I can think. As the two sinister figures left the low black car and moved toward the waterfront, the swirling gray fog seemed to reach out with entwining tentacles, like some slinky malignant creature of the sea desirous of preventing their approach. Tentacles which reluctantly dissolved into wispy swirls of enveloping mist as they came in contact with the dreaded figure of the Green Hornet and his companion. I think I see outline of small buildings slightly to left, Mr. Britt. Yes. That should be Rich's boathouse, Kato. Flash your light on my watch. Oh, yes, sir. What time it say? 11.30. Axford tell you police close in on boathouse at midnight? That's right. The anonymous note the police received said that the man responsible for the disappearance of the plans for the Richwood anti-atomic bomb device would meet with the Green Hornet in Richwood's unused boathouse at midnight tonight. What do you think motive be for sending note? First, to point suspicion at the Hornet. And second, to get rid of the men who actually made the deal. Evidently, they don't know the top agent who finally got the plans. Well, while authorities busy grilling men they hope to catch, the top spy may get away, no doubt. I want to get to those men before the police do. Maybe we'll get a clue to the one who sent that note and involved the Hornet. Come on. Briss and Cato cautiously approached the small building and soon stood before a door on the land side of the boathouse. A door which evidently opened into a room above the mooring platform. I see a dim light inside. Yes, We'll probably have to force that old door. Get ready. We'll hit it together. I'm ready. All right. Now. The Green Hornet! Don't move, Norton. As head of Richwood's Enterprises, you're probably the man of... Something wrong. Yes. Cato. We came too late. Is he... Norton's dead. Murdered. Murdered? Yes. Now, look here. Knife in back. It must have happened just before we came. They fixed this room up the sort of an office to have so something as a meeting place. Killer getting away. Yes. That trap door over there must lead to the landing below. Come on.
Hey, you are, lady. Head of Richmond Enterprises and Fire Hey, you are, sir. Straight by search for Green Hornet. Hey, you are, sir. Be all about it. Yes, he is. So you'd better stop for going around slamming doors, I expect. The reason he's off is talking to Gunny. <laughs> Wonder what got him out of bed so early. It's funny, but I never thought to ask him. Anyhow, it isn't that he's in early, it's just that you're so late. Late, am I? After chasing around most of the night getting troops and things for the Sentinel, while you were snoozed away at home oh, taking it. Okay, okay, Skipper. After all, I guess the Daily Sentinel would fold up if we didn't have you to bring in the headlines. You can say that again, Casey. <laughs> I'm the old... <laughs> Ah, you and your sarcastics. I'm going in to see the... What for, Gunnigan? I did think it's not... Oh, good morning, Axley. Hi, Reed. Hi, Gunnigan. Ah, morning. What are you saying, Chief? Well, as I was saying... I did think Norton was mixed up in the disappearance of those plans. But now I'm inclined to think otherwise. Say, now, Reed, how can you sit there and say that, I'd like to know? Soon it's as plain as the nose in your face that Norton was dealing with the haunted who stabbed him in the back so as to get out of pain off, no doubt. Chief, as long as you keep your opinions to yourself... Let us print the news as we get it. I won't argue with you. The authorities considered an open shut case against Norton and the Hornet. If they catch that murder in the Hornet, they'll get a lead to the missing plans and the spy passed them on to. Well, perhaps. But it seems to me if they find the person who sent that anonymous note, they'd get a direct lead to the one who has the missing plan. Uh, it's easy to see that the Hornet himself sent that printed note to cops headquarters read. He wanted to put the finger on Norton. Oh, really? Seems to me the finger's been put on the Green Hornet. But like Sarge says, tis the Hornet himself who put himself on the spot by playing smart with the cops. Is that the general opinion around headquarters? Sure. Then why not? I'd like to know. And they're concentrating their search on the Hornet alone? That's right. And to my way of thinking, Reed, it's time for you to start worrying. That it is. Why do you say that? Yeah. What's the meaning of that crack, Axford? Well, now, when they catch that spalpeen, Reed'll have to pay a lot of dough for that standard reward, won't he? Oh. That, I... Uh, by the way, Gunnigan, send someone over to interview Richwood. Okay, Chief. Let me go, Gunnigan. I'll get him to talk. That I will. Sure, sure. Go ahead. But don't be gone all day. Huh. Why do you have to go that Get going. And let me know how you make out. Sure. I'm on my way, Reed. Frankly, I'm very much interested in this case. And perhaps Richwood will say something that will give us a new slap. I'll get to see him, and I'll tell you exactly what he says, Reed. See you both later. Come so on. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I can tell you and Gunnigan about the interview at the same time. Back at last, sir. I knew when I let him go, he'd be all day getting to say Richwood. Here it is, almost six o'clock. Ah, keep it, sir, will you? Big shots like Richwood are hard to see. Catch a clock right oh, in. Oh, forget it, Axford. All right. What about the interview? Well, now, let's put it this way, Reed. I went to Richwood's place, and after waiting for a heck of a long time, I got in to see him. I told him who I was and all, so he seemed quite willing to talk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Richwood. I don't care if I do. Uh. I understand you want my views on the unfortunate happenings of last night. That's right, sir. I must say it's been a great shock to me, especially coming on top of the laws of our plan. Sure, sure, I know. But um, about Mr. Norton, do you think that I he I know what you're be... going to ask, Mr. Axford. And I know, of course, what the authorities believe, what I must believe, which is it hurts me to do so. And that is that Mr. Norton, whom I trusted above all others, betrayed that trust by selling those plans to foreign agents. Dealing, of course, with the Green Hornet. Uh, that he did, sir. Did you have any suspicions at all about Norton when you first missed those plans? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, if it hadn't been that the police received that note and then heard the Hornet leaving the motorboat, I, I would have sworn that Norton died with his boots on, sitting there at the desk over some company work. And... Uh, did you know about that office in the boathouse? Yes. Uh, Mr. Norton wanted privacy to write a scientific book. I suggested he use the old boathouse I owned up the river. It is hard to believe he'd pull a stunt on you like he did, Mr. Richwood. Yes, it is. I, at ten o'clock, we sat over a bit of brandy in the study of my home, talking. Then he left. I had little thought then that at eleven thirty he'd, he'd be slumped over the desk in the boathouse with a knife in his back. Uh, too bad. 
Uh, do you think the plans will turn up? If they find the Hornet, they'll get a lead to the foreign agent I'm sure has his plans. Well, there isn't much more I can tell you, Mr. Axford. Except that the loss of those plans and the murder of Norton... That's about all he had to say, Reed. You sure have heard about Norton turning against him and selling those plans. I can understand his feelings, actually. You better write up that interview and give it a rewrite. Okay, I'll get right on it. I'll get a spread ready in case we catch the Hornet, Chief. It's best to be prepared, Gunnigan. Let's hope they do catch Norton's killer in time to recover those missing plans. It'll make quite a spread for the Daily Sentinel. Here's some more letters to the editor, Mr. Riggs. Did you look them all over, Miss Case? Yes, sir. And there's one on the housing situation that's quite interesting, and I thought... Well, you read them out and send Gunnigan the ones you think should be printed. It's almost seven o'clock. You better call it a day. I wanted to finish the letters you gave me, and... Well, I'll be leaving shortly. No use killing yourself. (laughs) Well, I've always said I wanted to die with my boots on. (laughs) So if you find me someday slumped over my desk, (laughs) that'll be it. (laughs) Well, let's hope nothing like that happens to you. (laughs) What's on your mind? Another letter? I won't mind if no, you want to dictate. No, no, nothing. No, I, I was just thinking of something else. Oh, well, I just wondered. I'm going to call it a day. You better do the same. I'll see you in the morning. All right. Now I'll get these letters to Gunnigan in the morning. Good night. Good night. So Gunnigan's got a spread ready in case they catch the holiday. Eh? Maybe you'll get a different spread to print. Cato, forget about dinner. As soon as I get home, we'll be going out in the Black Beauty. Yes, sir. It's ready. Good. And see that our weapons are in order. Tonight, we're going out to catch Norton's murderer. And now, back to the Green Hornet. After telephoning to Cato, his faithful Filipino valet, and the only person knowing his identity as the Green Hornet... Rick Reed left his office at the Sutho building and went to his apartment where Cato was waiting. You say over the phone we go to catch murderer of Norton. You know who murderer is, Mr. Britt? I think I do, Cato. But we'll have the proof if I can make him show his hand. Well, how do you do that? I haven't time now to explain. I'll tell you about it as we drive. Everything ready? Yes, sir. I check gas weapons and get Black Beauty ready. Good. Let's get going. Stepping through a secret panel in the rear of the closet in his bedroom, Britt Reed and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This passage led to an adjoining building, which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, superpowered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. <coughs> Rick Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming Black Beauty sped into the darkness. make it seem you suspect the right man this time, Mr. Brick. But how you get proof? Cato, what I want to do is to figure out some way to get him and his spy friends together at the boathouse. Then I'd tip off the police. Well, it's not easy to get them to go to the boathouse. I know. But there must be some way. If I can all... Cato, stop here at drug store so I can use the phone. I'll leave my disguise in the car and talk to him on the phone. Yes, sir. Well, there's a drug store in this vicinity. I stopped there. Good. Step on it. A short time later, Britt Reed had entered a phone booth in a drugstore and dialed a number. He was talking in a terse monotone. Now get this and let me do the talking. I've already told you I'm the Green Hornet. The man you sent to kill Norton knows now that you try to frame him as well as myself. I can take it. He can't. He's planning to leave evidence in the old boathouse that will point to you and the man who got the plans. I'm being hunted, so I'm laying low. You'll have to get that evidence yourself before he tips off the cops. 
I'll come to you when I get the chance for my share of the dough you got. It'll be my pay for this tip-off. So long. I think I can convince Pinkato. Get going. What do we do now, Mr. Britt? If things work out as I hope they will, we'll have work to do at the old boathouse. The fog is blowing in from the river, so there'll be less chance of detection. Well, maybe man phone police and tell their phone call him. Then maybe police come here. If he phones the police, it'll be proof that my suspicions about him are wrong. But you still think he's guilty, party? I'm almost sure of it, Kato. He slipped up on too many points, as I told you. We'll know for certain before very long. Good. Our work is done for the time being. When I return to this city, I'll have more for you to do. That was a good idea, putting a finger on Norton, Weiser. But there's one thing I'd like to know. Hmm? What's that? Why did the cops come to that boathouse just as I was leaving? I just got away in the boat by the skin of my teeth. Ah, forget it, good. Main thing is, you did get away. You've been well paid for your work. Yeah. All packed and ready to leave for the airport. The good thing it was 40 in the river last night. Them cops shoot straight. They would have put I told that. you to forget it. What difference does it make? Oh, I've been thinking. You know, I almost didn't go through with it. Only your friend promised to pay so much. When I got to the boathouse last night and Norton met me at the landing, he was kind of friendly. Then we went up inside... All oh, my pals call me John. Oh. Sit down, Doug. No, no, thanks. I ain't staying with I was told you were bringing a boat over to leave in the boathouse, so I agreed to come here and see if you made it all right. <laughs> I have some work to do anyway. Yeah? Yes, I'm working on a book. A scientific book. If you wait a little while, I'll drive you into town. You ain't going into town, Norton. <laughs> what do you mean? Just sit right where you are. This is a knife I'm holding in your back. I said you ain't going into town, see? <laughs> you must be joking. Why would you... Maybe want... the cops will think you sold those plans they're looking for. Or maybe... They... That's it. No, listen. I have a wife and child. It's a Christmas season. Stop I... the felon. You ain't the only guy that's got a kid. As I said before, you ain't going to town, Norton. You about oh, I just got to thinking about him taking a rap for something he didn't do. Me making an orphan out of his kid at Christmas time. I was an orphan, you know. Don't be an idiot. His child isn't an orphan. His mother's still living. Well, half an orphan then. Just ain't right. Hello? Oh, you. I'm in a hurry, so... What's that you say? Uh, you did, huh? He told you what? He's planning to do what? I see. Now I understand why he was talking to me as he was. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'll meet you there. And bring Gus with me. Hmm? <laughs> You'll come all right. Goodbye. Who's well, then? Why this? What was he talking about? You'll soon find out, Gus. Get your things on. We're going to meet somebody at the boathouse. Sure. Who are we going to meet? <laughs> Someone who wants to see you particularly. You'll take the boat. I told him you'd be sure to come along. No, why should I go along? What? Well, uh, I was afraid you wouldn't want to. So I'm using this gun. It's a good thing you're so obliging. Come on. phone isn't there waiting for the others. Let's hope they come soon. I hope they come before police. Maybe we make mistake to call police so soon, Mr. Britt. Listen, there's a motorboat coming to the boathouse. With them, no doubt. I'm sure of it. Do you see anything? No, no, far it's too thick. There's no doubt they've gone inside with the boat. Come on. We'll go to the end of the boathouse facing the water. There's something we have to do before the police arrive. Hurry. Now, 
We want to sneak up on them. Okay, sir. You got your gun, Sarge? Of course not, Ashford. I just point my finger at killers and they flop over dead. <laughs> Have I got me gun? Uh, the rest of the bike. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Sears here. will be over in a minute. Quiet. I'm with you. Quiet. Listen to me. You boys get down to the riverbank in case they make a break. Axford, you and Cassidy can come along with me. All right, sir. Come on, then. Oh, no, stick right with me. Both of you. I'm right behind you, Zach. We'll stop here. If we move close to the door, we might hear them talking. Quiet now. When he talked to Axford, he said first that the Hornet left the boathouse in a motorboat. Second, that Norton died with his boots on, sitting slumped over his desk. Evidently, the killer told him that. But we know he fell from the chair and lay several feet from the desk. Well, that's true. And third, he said he thought that at 11.30, Norton would be slumped over his desk with a knife in his back. We only ones know the exact time Norton died. No, the killer also knew. But the police found Norton almost ten minutes later. I guess that Richwood was involved when he was so definite in his fight. Well, capture of Richwood and Spies, clear name of Norton and Green Hornet. Yes. Of course, it isn't much, but it be some consolation to Norton's widow to know her husband was innocent of the charges against him. Oh, it's too bad he'd be murdered. It would not mean a very merry Christmas holiday for wife and child. Oh, the Sentinel will see to it that they have some compensation for their loss. At least for the child will have a good Christmas. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> People will not think much of Green Hornet. But tonight he show up traitor, help police catch spies, and clear a man's name. A good Christmas present to city. <laughs> Cato, you make me feel like Santa Claus. Well, at least we've done our part to clear up the boathouse mystery, if nothing more. Seven of The Green Hornet's finished his job, and Britt Reed's fired. Confucius say, a man who leads double life sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Well, Britt Reed never get much rest while Green Hornet keeps him always on the move, Mr. Britt. Cato, you said a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> 